Hi, Dave and Beth Nicodemus here from Beyond the Walls. We are here with virtual Bible series video number three. Uh, it's all on chapter two of Messy Spirituality by Mike Iaconelli. We wanted to share a quote from the book that really resonated with us in this chapter. This may sound shocking to some, but spirituality is a home for those who don't have life figured out, who don't know the Bible as well as they could, and who don't have their spiritual lives all together. The rest of us who thought there wasn't a rest of us, Christians who are trying to follow Jesus the best we can. And I just love this because God called us into ministry and I really fought it at first because I thought, goodness, I'm not the right one. I I don't have my act all together. Um, we're struggling at home. I have all these wounds. I'm still in the process of healing. I struggle with anxiety. I've struggled with insomnia. I am just not the right person for ministry, God. I think you made a mistake in this calling. And what he's shown me over time is, is the so many service, service after service when I sat there, a mess on the inside and holding it all in, that I wasn't the only one in the room struggling with those things and that it was that mess and that inner anxiousness that qualified me to grow with other women, to reach out, to walk with women in pain. And it has been a journey. But um, but we just love that, that part, the rest of us who thought there wasn't a rest of us. I think a lot of this has to do with something else that Mike Iaconelli touches on in this chapter that really stuck out to me, and that's pretending or or unpretending, as he calls it. And, you know, being in several different churches, growing up in church my entire life, I've seen a lot of pretending, and I've done a lot of pretending. Now, as someone who likes to use imagination and pretend, there's nothing wrong with it. The problem is, is that when I pretend, when I go to church, and it looks like I have everything going right, I don't have any problems, my faith is so great, what happens then is it puts up this false pretense of who I really am and what I'm dealing with. You know, it kind of reminds me of a, a, a sermon illustration video I once saw where there's this family and they're in this frantic rush to get to church. They're in the minivan and everyone is screaming at each other. I think the kids still are trying to eat breakfast in the back of the seat. They're fighting. The mom is yelling. The dad is yelling and they're they pulling into church and they're late and the wheels are just squealing into the parking lot and they're running into the sanctuary and they get in the row and as soon as they sit down it's all smiles and god bless you and i just think how many times have i done that where i show up pretending that everything is okay when it really isn't and what i have found uh, as i get to know people in churches and people come to me and ask for counsel or prayer what i find is we are all struggling. We all have messes. We all have shortcomings. We all have failures. The problem is sometimes we don't like to be transparent about it. Now, I don't mean we need to broadcast everything to the world, but what happens is in the majority of Christian homes, in the majority of Christian churches, is we pretend that everything is great. And so the people look at us and someone who's really struggling maybe wants to be honest about what's going on they feel like they can't share because they don't want to be the only ones who are messed up, the only ones who are hurting, because it makes them question, well, maybe my faith isn't strong enough, and that's not what it's about. And Mike Iaconelli talks about this. You've got to stop pretending. You need to be real and come to Christ. In fact, we really liked uh, this passage that he uses at the beginning of the chapter. Our churches are filled with people who outwardly look contented and at peace, but inwardly are crying out for someone to love them, just as they are, confused, frustrated, often frightened, guilty, and often unable to communicate even within their own families. But the other people in the church look so happy and contented that one seldom has the courage to admit his own deep needs before such a self-sufficient group as the average church meeting appears to be. That was by Keith Miller. And I think we just we just really resonated this because we're as we're looking to plan a church and start something new, we're looking at really maybe redefining church and, and creating a culture and an atmosphere where we don't have to pretend anymore, where we can be the messy people that we are who love Jesus and who know that he pursues us and that we have worth and value. I think we often say we want our children to know that they're created and redeemed and have a purpose. 
And as a woman who struggled with insecurity, I need to know that I'm created and redeemed and have a purpose in my own mess and failures. It's such an important message. One of my favorite stories in this entire book comes from this chapter. Uh, and it's about the little boy who goes to the pet shop looking mm -hmm. for a puppy. And he's looking at all these puppies with, with the pet shop owner. And there's this puppy is smaller and he's kind of off in the corner away from all the others who are playfully barking and uh, romping around. And he says, I want that one, that one in the corner. And the pet shop owner says, no, 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 little boy, you don't want that puppy. That puppy's got something wrong with its leg. It's never gonna be as healthy as these puppies. You don't want that one. Choose one of these other puppies. And the little boy gets this kind of stern look in his eyes and he's like, no, that's the one I want. And then he rolls up his pant leg to show that he's wearing a brace on his leg. And Mike Iaconelli writes that it's not, it's not the crippledness that disqualified that puppy. It's what qualified it to be this little boy's puppy. And I think about my own life and I think about going to God, going to Christ. And instead of saying, well, look at me, look what I've done, I've got it all together. Instead, pulling up my pant leg and saying, I've got some, I've got some crippledness. I've made a lot of mistakes, I'm hurting. And I think that's when God smiles and says, I know, I love you. And that's why I choose you. Let's stop pretending. Let's go to our Father with our hurts, with our failures, with our doubts, our struggles, our mess, and say, here I am. This is what I am, but I am yours. And I hope that when you do that, you'll feel the same thing that we felt, the love of the Father for his messy, messy child. Instead of having a discussion question today, I want to end with a prayer. So wherever you are, unless you're driving, uh, if you want to close your eyes and just pray uh, with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the Lord of the mess, that you loved us, your messy children, so much that you sent your Son into our lives, a perfect Son into a broken world, a Son who looks at the mess and wasn't afraid to wallow into the mess with us. We ask, Lord, that we would be honest about the messy nature of our lives, that we would come to you with our struggles, with our hurts. Lord, that we would just be honest about what we are going through, what we've been through, and perhaps the fear that we feel in where we're going. Lord, we give it to you. We give it to you not as perfect people, but as your messy children. We thank you for the love that you have shown us through your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you next week for video number four as we look at chapter three together. God bless you all.